Okay, assalamu alaikum and good evening to all of you. I hope you can hear me well. I would like to welcome everyone in the in the fifth GSO summer workshop session that I will be presenting inshallah. I'm super excited and I hope you are as well. To introduce myself, my name is Hussam Rawahi, a geologist who works at Petroleum Development of Oman in the Geological Solution Team and Exploration Sedimentology Team. So yes, that's why this presentation is about petroleum sedimentology and exploration. In exploration, I'm also a volunteer uh, as the GSO editor and one of the technical subcommittee. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the society for organizing this kind of workshop, and special thanks for Abdul Munam Zakwani for the efforts to organize this event, and to Dr. Mohammed Kendi from the Earth Science Consultancy Center for his efforts and all his presentations. As a reminder, the level expected in this session is for geoscience students and fresh graduates in, uh, and fresh graduates in petroleum industry. So I won't go to ma many details about the topics and I will try to explain some technical and non-technical terms as we go. I may jump from time to time from English to Arabic to define some vocab vocabulary. However, the main discussion will be in English. So, and I will try to make this session informal. So ask whenever you want but keep in mind that i need also to go through the materials as well so i will try to go through to some comments and question while i present uh, i'm logged in in my desktop and laptop so i'll be able to see your comments question while presenting uh, i need to mention too uh, that most uh, of the technical content in my slide are from the internet or published paper and books and i tried my best to cite everything so in case if i miss referring to any citation my sincere apology in advance. I'm aiming to finish within 45 minutes and I just in case that I got disconnected, I will try to rejoin immediately so we can catch up. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, if I, we can open the slides, yes. So the summer lecture uh, introduced different uh, topics uh, related to petroleum uh, industry. And it started with three presentation by Dr. Mohammed al Kendi, overview of the petroleum system of Oman. I will open this, the pointer. And then he went to geophysical data and seismic interpretation workflow. And uh, finally the play and prospect evaluation. Dr. Talal al uh, uh, talk was postponed. However, Abdul Munim just told me it's, it will be in 23rd of July. So inshallah that by next week, uh, don't miss it. Uh, then Muhammad Al-Amri, he presented overview of the geomechanics and its application to petroleum industry. So today I will be presenting petroleum sedimentology and its application in hydrocarbon exploration. And then inshallah, after two days, I'm aiming to do a learning uh, geology virtually. And this is, it's not more of, a, it's not like a lecture, it's more of of how to do or how to learn and uh, using Google Earth. I will show you some example while I'm going through it. So again, the topic will be petroleum sedimentology and its application in hydrocarbon exploration. And what's not to expect from this workshop so normally people will start with outlines what we have but i would just may, i want just to put this statement that we want to be able to discuss all topics related about petroleum sedimentology actually by itself the petroleum industry it's a huge world and it's there's a lot of topics that it's difficult to capture it even in a lifetime maybe however and uh, if we talk about one branch of it, which is petroleum sedimentology by itself, it have a lot of topics that needed actually to be captured in different sessions and definitely one hour won't be enough. So again, the aim here is just to give you an awareness to know exactly what we are talking about. And to explain, uh, should, you shouldn't expect to explain in detail how the different techniques tools are running. So I won't go through how the logs, uh, for example, gamma ray, logs are capturing the information uh, the information or the data from the rock. However, I'll just give you a quick statement, but I want to go to how the, these tools are operating. And also not the, for example, 10 section techniques, I want to go in detail. And of course, I want to be able to answer all the question. Uh, I, okay, I might have uh, just completed nine years in video, but still I, I, I'm, I am sure you that every day is a new learning 
and it's difficult actually to have all the questions. And this is the exciting part of being a geologist because you always uh, see different rocks, different play and different formation that will definitely capture your interests. What we'll be covering in this workshop, so petroleum sedimentology. So I will give you an overview, what is petroleum sedimentology? And then the data and techniques of reservoir sedimentology. So one of the branch of petroleum sedimentology, which I will explain later, is the reservoir sedimentology. And since uh, the reservoir is one of the important elements of petroleum system, I will be dealing more. However, there's other aspects of the petroleum sedimentology. I won't be able to capture it in this session. And inshallah, if you like it, I might go do another session later for other aspects of the uh, petroleum sedimentology. And again, the reservoir sedimentology part in hydrocarbon exploration. We need to start with the definition. What is sedimentology? And for all the all definition, I just uh, took it as it is, as it was explained uh, in the literature. So the scientific study of sedimentary rocks and of the process by which they were, were formed. And this is something need to be understood because the process, especially the water process, because every, let's say, expert sedimentologist I met, he always say, was telling me, Hussam, the process, always understand the process. And this is very important in the sedimentology world because you are, every rock have its own way of how it forms and the process that led to its deposition, for example. And which this includes, this process can give rise to sediment deposition, like weathering and erosion, or modify after deposition. So their genesis, any modification, it is, uh, if it is physical or biological or chemical to the rocks. So that's why you see it's even before the, uh, the deposition and after the deposition, you're still in the realm of the sedimentology. And as a, the science of sedimentology is having like a controlled by the three main science, uh, science, the physics, chemistry, and biology. And you can see this interaction between the physical, and this is when we go to the classic, uh, especially classic sedimentology realm, where it's controlled mainly by transportation and deposition. However, in the chemistry, you are talking about diagenesis and the formation of autochthonous sediments, or more specifically, if you talk about the carbonate rocks or the evaporites. And then the biology, and of course, uh, the, the carbonate is uh, one of the main aspects in this, but there's uh, the paleontology world that you try to understand how the effect of the biology to the sedimentology. Why it is important? Well, before we go into the importance, what are the sedimentary uh, rock for uh, lithological groups? So as we mentioned, the clastics, and there is the biochemical, biogenic, organic deposits that goes to limestone, dolomite, coal, phosphorite, and chert. And there's the chemical precipitation, iron, stone, evaporites, and then the volcanic clastic. So you can see different realms. And just to give more complex, every aspect, every group that we have here, it have its own branches and it needs more uh, studying and there's a lot of interesting stuff to each one of them. Me personally, I'm interested more in the clastics. So even though I, when I graduated from Sultan Qaboos University, my thesis was more in the Hawar member of Al-Kharaib formation. So it was carbonate. And then I moved to the clastics realm. And then in my master's, I did the Fara formation, which is one of the Precambrian rocks. And it had the clastic, it had the carbonate, it had the volcanic clastic. And yes, so it is exciting, super exciting. A lot of geology here in Oman, you can go and learn and understand what uh, the history of the earth basically so why imp what's the importance of sedimentary rocks sedimentary rocks cover approximately 75 percent of the earth's surface hydrocarbon are found in these rocks and we are that's why we have this topic today source of iron man manganese aluminum gypsum and phosphate and of course used for building materials we'll focus mainly in the hydrocarbon uh, uh, that uh, contained in the rocks itself. What is petroleum sedimentology? So what I explained before about the, the formation and the process that uh, lead to the deposition of this sedimentary rocks, now it's the application of it. So how we can use this information to understand where we can find hydrocarbon. And this is the, uh, the, more, the very important part. 
because you are trying to apply what has uh, what knowledge that you have as a sedimentologist in the petroleum realm. And before that, before we go delve more, you need to understand, of course, the petroleum system element. And this is one of the very critical uh, topics that need to be understood well, especially if you be working in the uh, hydrocarbon uh, industry, oil and gas. Because uh, as I remember, one of the experts once told me that you are, when you work in the these companies, you are not there to show them how good a sedimentology you are, a sedimentologist you are. It's mainly of where I can find the hydrocarbon because they already know that you are good because that's why they hire, they did hire you. However, you try now to understand where we can find the hydrocarbon in order to, and uh, of course, for the economic reason to invest. So imagine that you put all that money and then you just say, oh, this is rock is a, a feldspathic rich. And that's it. This, this is not enough. Believe me, I tried that. <laughs> okay. So if we talk about the petroleum system, we have the source rock, the kitchen. It's where the hydrocarbon is actually generated. And then we have the reservoir where the hydrocarbon will be migrating to and where it will stay there waiting for us to explore. However, it's not necessary to be waiting for you because sometimes if the steel is breached, which is the overburden rocks, if it's non-permeable, and I will explain the permeability and porosity aspect after a while, is that if it's breached, it can go up. And then they, you have the trap configuration. You need to understand your trap, the, the faults. And as you can see from this image, the green stuff are the source rock where the oil is or the gas is generated. And you can see there's different windows. So whenever you go to a higher pressure or let's say enough pressure and temperature to generate an oil, this is the window. This is where the rock can actually go and produce this uh, hydrocarbon type. And if it, it ha if you, again, sorry, if it needed more, uh, it, if it will take more pressure and temperature, then the gas will work. So that's why you have the bottom of oil window or the top of gas. And then you have this the accumulation, which is can be seen here. And why is that? Because this oil will migrate from the source rock, which is in green, and goes into the reservoir. Uh, just keep in mind, this is very simple diagram. So it doesn't mean that always that you have the seal, uh, sorry, the source rock goes into the reservoir. But sometimes there is some reservoir self charger like what we have in Natah formation. So uh, the oil will be going here and then it will reach the seal rock, the non-permeable, that it, will, it doesn't allow it to go beyond that. And uh, and it will stop here, so it won't go upward, but it will try to migrate laterally, so uh, horizontally, let's say. So when it reaches this level, you need also a rock that actually stop go, uh, for the oil to migrate further. So that's why a structure element is very important, and that's why in structure, in this case, you have this, uh, you can see the syncline, uh, the, the grabbing feature. However, in uh, other places that you, don't have the grabber, you have fold, and then that's why you have the Fahud field, for example. And this has been explained very well with Muhammad al Kendi, where you can see the field next to this folds, and where because that, that folds had a fault just beneath it. So, what's the role of sedimentology in this aspect? Sedimentology involved in the source rock because you need to understand the rock that make this oil, because at the end, the this rocks contains this organic matter that eventually transform into oil. So this organic matter, you need to understand the environment that where it was deposited. What is the, uh, let's say the, the climate, where exactly, if, uh, because it's needed an anoxic environment and that's why you need to understand it. And you need to understand the distribution of it. You need to know where I can find it. And of course the reservoir, which is our topic, I will go to its definition after this slides. You have also the seal rock. As I mentioned, not every seal can actually hold the hydrocarbon because sometimes the seal is not, uh, I mean, it, it cannot stop this hydrocarbon. It can uh, sorry, it cannot stop the hydrocarbon. So that's why it will try, the hydrocarbon will try to go upward until it breaches it. And that's why you need to understand the seal. And this is one of the things that need to be kept in mind. Not every seal is 
everywhere is the same. So the shale in Oman, for example, it's not the same as the shale in Saudi. It's not the same as in UK. It's not the same in US. So that's why you need to understand it. What actually make this seal powerful to stop this migration? The trap, yes, people will say, okay, the trap, there's no any sedimentology element in it. However, I'll just mention the stratigraphic trap where the lithology changes happen, the diagenistic uh, uh, trap. So there is this new concepts, let's say, not very, very, uh, very new, but it's still is something now the world are going to, uh, the hydrocarbon industry, because the structural uh, reservoir, most of them has been discovered. Now the people are going towards the stratigraphic element where it's very difficult. Sometimes it's even less than the seismic resolution. So as you can see, sedimentology can go to every element of the petroleum system. Again, you are dealing with rocks and then you need to understand your rocks because if you don't understand it, then you won't be able to utilize it in the best method or best practice. So that's why you will always need to understand what you are dealing with to, to know how to use it. Okay, as a petroleum sedimentologist, what is your role in hydrocarbon industry? So first of all, you need to be able to identify different types of sedimentary rocks, of course, and their importance to re in relation to the element of petroleum system. So again, as I mentioned, you need to understand the link, how this sand can actually help to uh, uh, to contain the reservoir, how uh, the sorry the oil, and how this seal is is it permeable or not, and is the source rock can actually generate oil or not. So that's why you need to try to understand it, and this is, will include a lot of uh, aspects that you need to uh, to keep in mind, which I will go through it. And then the ability of understanding and interpret the position and environment, and this is also one of the very critical thing that you need to develop. And uh, Dr. Mohammed Kendi, in his first presentation, he mentioned that, and it's very important because every environment have a different way of. Uh, uh, interpreting them because it will affect the lateral change and the vertical stacking. So when I'm saying the vertical stacking is how the rock is are topping of each other. And that's why you need to understand the vertical, what we call net to gross and the horizontal net to gross, because you want to, as an explorer, you will always want to know where I can find more. You don't try to find less. <laughs> you, of course, you want to try to find a better, uh, our bigger uh, prospect. So that's why you will try to understand your deposition environment again in relation to the elements of petroleum system. And then you have the integrating the sedimentology and petrological well field basin and regional data with other data, so seismic, petrophysicist, basin model. All of this aspect need to be integrated together. And this is one of the beautiful thing in the geoscience world you need to integrate it. It's, it's a must. If you just focus on one aspect, it is the, it doesn't give you the full picture. Okay, I can say it's not only in geoscience, it's in every science. It's always about integration, talking to each other, because there's a lot of articles in, sometimes if you just surf the web, you will see that a biologist has inspired by, from a geologist, uh, from a paleontologist, for example. And that's why it's very always critical to understand, because at the end you try to understand the petroleum system, build play maps and define prospects. So we mentioned about the, the different petroleum system element. We are talking about one of them, the reservoir. So what is a reservoir? A reservoir is a subsurface volume of porous and permeable. And these two factors are very, very, very important to understand the reservoir that has both storage and capacity and the ability to allow fluids to flow through it. Sorry, I might read it very slowly, uh, but it is for you to understand because every word defined here is, is part of understanding the reservoir. So when you talk about the reservoir, let's think of it as a sponge. So the sponge, this is actually your like a rock because even though we see the rock is like solid, hard, brittle, you cannot, uh, break it easily. If uh, if you see the under microscope, you see actually it contain pore pore spaces, like masamat, yeah, uh, 
this is very important to understand how it is because the hydrocarbon will be contained inside of it. So that's why you need uh, actually to understand what's the porosity type and the permeability, how this porosity are connected to each other. So the ability for this fluid to move around that place. As again, going back to the sponge, just imagine the sponge. If you put water in it, you can see it sucks all or absorb all the water and then it's contained there. If you squeeze it, it starts to remove all, uh, it starts to, to remove some of the water. As you squeeze it more, you see it that it's uh, more. And if you just twist it, you see still the water is coming out. So this is just an indication that the errors in oil can, uh, may, uh, the hydrocarbon can may contain the reservoir, but it's not easy to get out. So you need to use all the method actually to be able to extract it. And of course, we cannot squeeze the rocks, but we have other methods, which is AOR fracking element that is used by the industry. So I hope it was clear. Uh, I will just check the comments quickly and I see if there is. Okay, Saif Al-Bulushi, all the best, Mr. Hassan. I'm so excited for your lecture. Thank you very much, uh, Saif. And Mazen Sa uh, Salmani, Petroleum sedimentology is always fascinating and challenging nowadays to characterize the petroleum system elements. Yes, exactly. And thank you for that. So uh, please keep it coming. Uh, I'm just checking the comments or if you have any question, just go ahead. Because again, this is a uh, workshop. This is not just a lecture. We would like to have this interaction. And you know, it's difficult to have this physical interaction now, but uh, we'll try to use uh, the technology actually to and uh, to, to see, let's say, to teach and learn from each other, okay? So the definition of reservoir sedimentology, a lot of textful uh, slide, but I won't go through it, all of it. But it's like what I said, you try to study and explain the sedimentary environment, the genesis and the formation of mechanism of hydrocarbon reservoir in order to analyze and determine associated geological information and improve the effect of hydrocarbon exploration and development. So again, the, 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 your objective is actually to find, to uh, improve the effect of hydrocarbon exploration and development. And this is when you talk about the exploration part. Also improving oil field exploration, okay. And uh, prediction of petroleum reservoir heterogeneity at different levels by comprehensive utilization of geological seismic logging and well testing data. So like a, a typical explorer, you will try to understand what's happening to the rocks and where we can find more, what's the geometry, how big it is, and how much it can contain. Again, you are in a business and think about it, that if somebody give you, gives you a money, he's investing on you, and then at the end you bring something less than he was expecting, believe me, you don't want to be in that situation. So... Reservoir sedimentology and field life cycles. Where's your role as a sedimentologist or in the in this business? So since you start with the exploration phase, and this is the different, uh, or maybe I should explain this very quickly. So this is when you gain the access. So a company will come and operate in a block uh, after a bidding process. And this is what we have, like, for example, in uh, video, we have block six. So there's a certain area, a specific area that for us to go and explore and produce from it. So we cannot just produce everywhere, anywhere. But uh, so the, the good we do, the, let's say the more opportunity for us to keep, uh, to keep that block. So in the exploration phase, you will try to find out where is the, uh, the reserve. So let's go here. This is the phase, exploration phase, and this is the development phase. And then you see as uh, exploration, you will start with the one one well. So imagine that you just go outside and you try to find out where you can find the reservoir in an area maybe you don't have any nearby wells. That's why if it is a discovery, then you will try to. The objective is to understand the hydrocarbon reservoir, what type of it, what is the deposition environment, and try to uh, to get as much as you can. In terms of what research you need to focus is the type of hydrocarbon uh, in the reservoir. And then here the geochemistry guys are coming and to understand the oil type. And uh, also the reservoir, uh, the reservoir is uh, the sedimentology. 
the scale of a reservoir body again as i mentioned you know you want to understand how big it is because if you talk about a fluvial channel it's different than deltaic channel if it's different from a, a carbonate of a, a rim gel for example and also the distribution of hydrocarbon reservoir across the area and then this you want to use the aid of seismic uh, another tool need to be uh, understood and then you try to submit so the final result to submit controlled reserves and proposing well location evaluation optimizing exploration deployment so by that information from one well you will try now to understand where to drill next that's why it's an investment you don't just try to uh, drill blindly so you will try to make your best understanding using all the data that you have from this one well and the surrounding area to understand what's happening so in the middle a middle and later phase of exploration again evaluation well evaluating hydrocarbon so it's, it's almost the same objective now we have two wells or maybe two or three then you'll try to describe the three-dimensional distribution of structures and parameters of hydrocarbon reservoir while taking advantage of multi-well comprehensive evaluation i will talk about it inshallah in the coming uh, slides establishing conceptual model for oil and reservoir so we have the, also the development part i won't go through it now because we'll, our main focus is in the exploration phase so this is the life cycle as you can see why the white line here is actually is the cash flow is here's where you are put the investment and since you start well, so once you start uh, producing at that point the money are coming back so you can see it can take and this is the x-axis which is an, the air it shows you sometimes can reach nine years until you get actually the result that you want so you return the money that you want okay it's all about the scale and this is very important statement because it's always about the scale that you are trying to understand regardless if it's exploration or production or development you need to understand the scale even in the science when you show anyone a picture he always start with where's the scale and this is just uh, i like this diagram because it shows you how this scale varies it can from small understanding from the grains in the in specific bed you can build the bed sets and then th uh, and then into a bar which is again uh, the big uh, geometry of the sun bodies and then how this bar, uh, bars are connected to each other and then it goes into a channel and that's why you are going from small scale into a bigger scale to a channel and then you try to link with other understanding from other wells and then you build the basin until you reach in a point that you try to model what's happening in the subsurface you want to of course go in the subsurface to understand it so that's why you will use whatever provided up uh, from the wells or from the outcrops to understand what's happening so going to the different scale and resolution of the subsurface data as i mentioned so there's the seismic scale that can go to more than kilometers and then you have the well scale so the, the logs and this is more of the vertical resolution because it can goes according to the well and where the logging is happening so it can start from the surface and normally we start logging where the interest zone where we are expecting to find hydrocarbon however but it's like it's bigger than the cores because when we go to the cores or the rock sample that we are taking from the subsurface it is smaller so you are talking about either meter to centimeter scale and then from this rock plugs you will try to model the porosity and probability that you see so you use thin section you use sem scan electron microscope xrd x-ray diffraction all type of analysis to understand what's happening but you can see how the i mean the different tool that you have and you try to utilize it all of them and i'm when i'm saying all i mean all of them in order to understand what's uh, what kind of reservoir that you will be able to explore me as a sedimentologist i will always start with rocks and i i think everyone should start with this because you are extracting something from this uh uh objects i don't know if the right word is object but it, you try to extract something from it so you need to understand it before you just take anything from it and this will go to the aspect of the safety 
about uh, again just imagine that you are trying to like in a balloon there's a pressure on the underneath the subsurface and you are putting like you are poking a needle in it so you need to be really careful of how you will be able to explore from it and this is one aspect uh, but uh, again you try to understand to maximize the cost or the investment that you got so that's why we have how can we get the rock data uh, I mean in order to start with the rocks you need the rocks from the subsurface I will go through the other options but for now just keep in mind that you cannot go uh, of course two kilometers three kilometers you will be <laughs> you will definitely will be burned so that's why our oh, pressurize it's very difficult it's a different than the uh, mining business where they can dr not drill actually ex uh, 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 ex I don't remember the English word now, uh, uh, but uh, however, it's different from the mining queries that they uh, they dig. Yes, sorry, they dig for the minerals the deposits. Here you have just like that well, that one point, one uh, small point that goes toward the subsurface. So how you can get it is the drilling bit. So while you are drilling the uh, the subsurface, this it will crush this sediments. This rocks, it will come up as cutting, ditch cutting. So as a geologist, you will go and throw it and try to understand what kind of, what's the composition of it. However, it has this limitation of you cannot see the texture or you cannot see this, of course, sedimentary structure. You cannot say, oh, I actually, I see a uh, sediment, a cross bedding here. Of course not. And then the other way is the taking sample from the borehole of the rocks. And this is what you can see from this cylindrical shape of uh, the rocks. And normally it's around five centimeters. And this is, will give you at least a sexual composition, uh, just a sense of the reservoir quality. When it comes to the core, one of the expensive uh, thing that uh, you, you take is, and this picture showing you how the, the operation actually, how you can retrieve a rock from it. You can see how it is. Uh, it, it cuts through the subsurface. So when you go to the one of the interesting stuff, the outcrop. So Oman is blessed with different outcrops that is lies waiting for people to describe it, to understand it. Because this outcrop, when we say the word outcrop, is actually that part of the formation that you are looking for that uh, it's outcropping to the surface. So that's why it's called outcrop. So it's not like outcrop means a mountain. It's of course, it's an outcrop. Something is coming out, it's cropped out. So that's why we call it outcrops. And when you go to this location, for example, this is Miqrat. This can be deep as four kilometers underneath us, but it's out there in Mahout area. So geologists will go and try to understand what's the kind of reservoir it is, this Maqrat uh, formation. So you use the analogs, uh, outcrop studies of analogs to sub, uh, subsurface reservoir are integrated with subsurface data and are a key to understanding fascist depositional system and reservoir geometries and distribution. Uh, I see a comment saying that uh, there's a lot of disconnection. I'm sorry for that. Uh, I will try my best. I just fixed the microphone, so I hope it won't be continuing breaking up. Another place in, uh, in uh, Wadi Bani Kharos, uh, where the, you can see the 300 million years gap between the pre cambrian rocks, and then you have the Seq, uh, for, a Seq formation, which is Khof in the subsurface. So this kind of stuff, you won't be able to see it, of course, from the cores. You won't be able to see from the side wall sample, and the cuttings, definitely. So that's why you need to go outside to understand what's happening. Again, in outcrops, this is one of the channel uh, in Gharif, and you can, uh, oh, this is a Gharif formation, this is in a, a Dukum area, and it's just a comparison to show you that this is the core part. You are missing all this information. Of course, you cannot drill just wells next to it and plenty of them and take cores because as I mentioned, it's expensive. So that's why you will try to utilize what is in here and then uh, you can uh, understand the geometry of it. Okay, Abdul Munam is telling me to, if you can open it from YouTube, it is better. I hope so. Okay, so you, you uh, 
because of the time, I will try to speed up now. But this is a, a picture of a spare one core from one well A, and you can see the vari variation of the lithology. As a sedimentologist, you will go and describe this. You will try to understand. You use uh, what you teach, uh, they teach you in the university. You will try to understand the composition, the texture, the sedimentary structure, the beddings, if there is any fossils or not. And you try to uh, interpret the deposition environment. So you will put all this in the sedimentary logs. And then you will try to calibrate it somehow in the logs that has been taken from the same interval. But very important to capture as much information as you can from these rocks, because these rocks, uh, I can assure you, it won't stay for maybe 10 years because sometimes it just breaks out, especially if it contains oil. So, because there is some cores that have oil, and then uh, after a while, it uh, it's just getting loose. And because the oil is the only thing that it hold these uh, grains together. So that's why it's very important to capture as much as you can. And actually, this is the only data that you have from the subsurface at that time. So that's why you'll try to utilize it as much as you can. As I mentioned, as a classic realm, you will be using different uh, uh, matrices, matrices and also the different for texture to understand the sorting, the angularity, and also the if it's grain support, matrix support, and this if you talk about the classic realm. However, if you talk about the carbonate, then you use the famous Dunham classification to understand the different uh, components of the mud, and then you try to classify the rocks. Using other techniques, the petrography, and try to understand, as uh, this uh, diagram show you, that the sedimentary photography can go to understanding the depositional fabrics. So it gives you the mineralogy, the model composition, the grain morphology, the shape, basically, and grain size and orientation to get uh, or to interpret the deposition environment. However, there's, as I mentioned before, the modification. The modification uh, uh, from the diagenesis is like the compaction, the solution compaction, cementation, dissolution, and replacement. So it needs, uh, I won't be able to go to much detail because again, I'm watching the time and I don't want to run uh, out of the time. So that's why I will try just to give you some uh, uh, the important aspect, and then we can go ahead. But uh, this, uh, I will try my best. So it's putting the deposition environment and the diagenesis together in order to understand the reservoir quality of the rock, or the reservoir, basically. So you have a picture of a thin section, as you can see, as I mentioned before. The rocks may seem brittle, hard from outside, but if you slab it and cre uh, create a thin section, the blue stuff is a, a blue epoxy. So it, it's like a chemical that you put to a, a highlight where the part, it will fill the empty spaces. As you can see, this is a sandstone where the white stuff are the quartz and the brown stuff is a fill spar. And using a filled uh, spar staining, actually you can identify it's if what kind of fill spar, if it is potassium fill spar or plagioclase. And try to understand the uh, connection of the pore system, and if there, if you can see any cementation, using the XRD to understand the mineralogy or the XRF, the same. SEM is higher magnification, so you will try to see the clay minerals especially because there is different uh, way or, or it's by itself. You need to understand the clay types because there is some clay, like for example uh, the smectite family. If you inject water to, uh, to it, it will start to swell, and this is very uh, uh, problematic because if you injected uh, water into the formation, you might destroy the reservoir. So you might find a hydrocarbon, but eventually you won't be able to actually to uh, produce from it because you injected fresh water, which made the smectite swell. And there is, of course, the illite, there's kaolinite, and there's the chloride as well. Okay. Putting all this element together to try to understand the deposition environment. And as I mentioned before, every deposition environment, it has its own characteristic, but you are trying to use as much information altogether to understand who is, uh, uh, well, not who is, is uh, to understand what type of deposition environment you are dealing with. And here, just to show you some pictures, uh, some deposition environment interpretation of uh, the different formation in Oman. For example, this is uh, what you see here is the Haima uh, supergroup, and you have the Gharif, and you have the carbonate, the Mesozoic uh, time, the Cretaceous, and also the, the glacier uh, sediments, so the Al-Khalata. 
So it is okay to understand this. You need to identify, for example, if you say it's for uh, this is like I mean formation, one of the high super group uh, formation, a Cambrian rocks, Cambrian in time. You, you try to uh, highlight or map where is the Aeolian sand can be found. So when you drill in it, you try to understand the geometry because you know if you go beyond that, you might reach into a subha, uh, into a uh, playa, and it have a different reservoir quality than what you see in the Aeolian sand, of course. Because again, if you go to the uh, Al-Wahiba sand and just throw a water, you will see just how the water is going inside the water, uh, the water inside the sands. And this is something to keep uh, in mind because this is actually gives you an indication of how porous the Aeolian sand can be. And if you're talking about the, the Gharif uh, formation, you can see it's interpreted as to be like of a meandering uh, rivers, a fluvial, and then to a delta, and then a coastal marine. So you have lagoon, shore face. So you need to understand where to drill. Because let's say if we drill and we found the channel, where you will be drilling next? You will try not to go in this direction. You will try to find out where the channel in this direction because it, there's more likely to get the sands and where's the reservoir. The same thing with the khalata that we have and also in the carbonate. After understanding the core and uh, try to link with the logs, and this is one of the very important uh, method or technique need to be understood because putting the rocks against the logs, it will give you an indication of how the logs behave to this specific rock. So that's why, as I mentioned before, and putting as much detail in the rocks, uh, rock description is very important because now you can link it to the logs. And then you will be able to correlate it across the field. Again, you cannot take core every time. So that's why you will try your best to link uh, and see what's happening. And there is a different uh, behavior of different rocks. For example, sand will have clean gamma ray. When I'm saying clean is low gamma ray. And the gamma ray tool normally is uh, capturing or measuring the radioactive in the rocks so it doesn't just explain that it's a sand because sometimes even the sand can be radioactive it have the uh, glyconite or heavy minerals uh, mineral mineralogy so that's why it's going back to understand what kind under the thin section what's the composition of this specific sand for example and the same thing with shale because shale it have a lot of high of uh, percentage of thorium that's why you will see the gamma ray is going high so every Rock type have a different kind of the behavior. So that's why you always need to calibrate across it. And there are some, for example, from this paper, they calibrated actually even to the seismic. Again, the seismic resolution is very uh, higher than the uh, rock properties because it's, uh, that's why you will build a scientific as they, what have they have done here. Using that knowledge, you will try to understand also what's happening between the core and the deposition environment. Because when you link the rocks into the gamma ray, for example, or the logs, you will try to, you will be able maybe to interpret what kind of deposition environment you are. For example, in this case, you can see it's coarsening upward. So you see the lag deposits and then it, it's finding, sorry, it's finding upward here, sorry. It's a, so that's why when you go up, you go from the, for example, let's say pebbly sand or conglomeratic into a sand and finally into a, until you reach the shell. If you see it in the gamma ray, you will see the same behavior where the sand will show cleaner gamma ray. As you go up, you will have a more shellier, uh, or let's say uh, higher radioactive uh, material. So it might indicate shell. And it gives you this bell shape and that's why you have what they call channel point bar uh, from in alluvial alluvial uh, understanding you have the delta as well so you see the interbedded how it, it is interbedded to each the sand and shell uh, this is has been taken from different uh, uh, knowledge i mean from different publication but from my experience it's not quran now just keep in mind, so do not just go tomorrow and say, oh, I see this logs, are, it is a delta border, uh, border uh, proper gradation. Because it can vary, it can have a different, that's why you will always go, need to go back to the rocks and try to understand it. It's used here just to link things together. 
because for example this bell shape you see it over over here so it can have a, a it's a classic marine setting so you are from moving from a delta from continental into a marginal marine that's why it's always need to go back to the rocks and try to understand it and you see the deep sea settings and how it changed from the proximal, which is the nearby, near the coast, until the distal, which is far away. And you can see the sand, how it changes, and you're using the logs to understand it. By that, you, with the help of the stratigraphy, you try to capture or to correlate this uh, reservoir, how it, how big it is. So that's why the more that you drill, the less uncertainty you have. So that's why sometimes you need to drill a lot of uh, well in order to able to track actually the sands or the reservoir across the area. And it depends to the which direction you do the correlation. But then as you build, you see the similar gamma ray responses and you go through it and try to link what's happening. And when I mentioned the stratigraphy, because in stratigraphy, they have different aspects. For example, if you talk about Gharif, they will use biostratigraphy. And this is one of the topic, interesting topic. They use palynology. Uh, in order to uh, understand what's happening uh, to correlate the rocks from one well to another very interesting I mean even now they use this tiny stuff in order to link things together and there's other chemostatigraphy the element of the rocks and try to understand it so people try uh, or let's say the geoscientists will always try to use whatever they have in order to understand and to better understand the distribution of yeah, the reservoir. And then you have this. As you can see it, you have a lot of wells and then you start to play with it. You try to understand what kind of deposition environment it is that you interpret and now you check. As a typical scientist, you put the theory, you put the question and now it's time to test it. Is it the same? Is it the right thing? And when you build it, it's not necessary to be 100%, but you will try your best uh, based on the available data that you have. And we, when we comes to the sequence stratigraphy, uh, it's one of the branches of stratigraphy that need to be understood very well, in, especially if you work in a petroleum system. I won't go in detail, but just to give you an idea that different system tracts have a different behavior of the rocks. But the most thing that you need to understood, uh, you understand is that it doesn't correlate, it can, oh, sorry, it can correlate sands with shale because it will depend on the chronology. It's the time of deposition. As if we put a, a modern analog, you can say that, like now, we have the wadis in, for example, Wadi al -Khov, and if you go to the beach, you will have the deposition of beach. It's a different environment, but you're linking them together in order to under, understand, understand the sequence stratigraphy. So it's the same, it was deposited in the same sequence. Using this knowledge, you will try to understand the pattern in the seismic because seismic, it's as I mentioned, the resolution is very high, and uh, uh, so, sorry, it's the other way around. It's low. That's why you 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 just, for example, like uh, a rocks or a unit with ten meters, you won't be able to capture what is what is it, what's the geometry. That's why you will always try to use the bigger picture, and then you link it with the sequence stratigraphy in order to build this kind of diversity environment. So you see the low system tract and then the transgression as you go up and then you try to understand the geometry and how this uh, rock units are behaving to each other. Here's a good example. And uh, you try very quickly to find out there is some kind of a geometry, if you can see it in this place. Uh, if you just focus on this, you can see this seismic downlapping towards the bottom and there is like probably it could be a delta so i don't know because i don't have any information about any well so that's why you will see this structure and you say okay i would like to drill here to understand what's happening maybe i'll take a core and try to understand what's happening here and here using uh, utilizing a sequence stratigraphy to uh, in, order, in order to understand the different packages of these rocks and eventually this is one of the nice paper the same paper that i showed you before about the logs and how it links to the outcrops across the area. So you see and you try to build how big it's uh, the reservoir that you have. So you can see we started from the small scale until the bigger scale. And then you generate your map. 
you have the deposition environment. You can, if you can notice, there is a well that just crossing a different units. You try to build up, and then you start to say that, okay, guys, you tell you to your colleagues, this is our my the, the reservoir distribution. Uh, I know that there's a shelf edge here. You have a different uh, 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 shallow marine rocks over here, and you have the fluvial delta X. So let's say the my the channel is going toward this, and then it reaches the sea, and then you have the deep sediments. All right, is that it? We are far from over. Why? Because at the end you have this kind of subsurface uh, look of the your reservoir. It's not easy. It's not like just uh, I understood where the sand is, where the Eulian sand, where the channel it is, and let's go and drill it. Because there are other elements that need to be captured. So imagine that you have this complication. So don't, do not be, always be sad if you, <laughs> you couldn't find it because sometimes it have very complex structure. That's, that's why in uh, what explain, has been already explained by uh, Dr. Muhammad Kindi, and I, I encourage you to go back and, uh, and watch that uh, uh, lecture or session again in order to understand more. Because one hour is, there's a lot of information has been given to you. You need to have more time to adjust it, to digest it in your mind. But as you can see here, you, you build this map on top of each other. You will try to understand the structural element. You try to understand the seal element, as we talked about before. The charge, where's the area that we have charge? For example, if the area in the east doesn't have charge, then even why you are looking for the reservoir? Because unless if there's a migration over there, but if there is no migration, then think business. I won't invest money in that area. So that's why different thinking, different ideas is always encouraged in uh, geoscience world and especially in the petroleum hydrocarbon industry because to build that knowledge and to say, let's drill here this 3 million well or 6 million well worth the invest because we might find this kind of uh, bigger, this X volume of rocks reservoir. So this is this is a key word, a key sentence that I need you to keep in mind, inshallah, as when in the future, when you work in hydrocarbon uh, industry, work as a geoscientist, but think as an investor. And it's very important because you will try to gather all the information to understand what's happening there. But at the end, when it comes to putting decision, you need to think as an investor because at the end, you are a businessman. You are trying to use, utilize the science that you have into a business. That's why you need to keep this in mind. So by that, I hope, okay, I took for... <laughs> 54 minutes and I'm sorry for that. I was intended for 45 minutes. So we are going to discussion questions. I will go through the uh, question in the chat, but if you have anything else, you just mention it and let's see if I will be able to answer them. Okay, there's a, a question. Can you please elaborate more how core or thin section analysis small scale could be utilized for regional or field scale? How accurate and confidence? Good question. So as we mentioned, you start with a small, very small scale and you try to build up that knowledge until you reach the, to the field scale. Uh, because this small scale, for example, if there is, uh, let's say a feldspathic sandstone, which is high rich in feldspar. Feldspar, will sh a high feldspar can show in the logs as high gamma ray. So if you don't understand this in the small scale, you will be starting to correlate the rocks across the field as like it's all shale. And you are missing all the reservoir in that place. So this is one of the characteristics of Gharif in, uh, in Oman, the uh, Permian uh, Gharif formation. It's high feldspathic. So you will use the gamma ray and density and nutrient logs in order to understand if it is a sand or not. That's why understanding the small scale and the bigger scale, you need to have that helicopter view. You go up and down, you try left and right all to understand what's happening. I hope I was able to answer it, but when you say how accurate and confidence, again, the confidence level, it depends. And this is the word that we are famous as a ge geoscientist. It's probably. So you'll always mention probably in order to actually deliver your message. And then the most, uh, the more in the data you have, the better understanding you have. Uh, what is the role of clay minerals like smectite in petroleum exploration? 
this is very good question and uh, okay so smectat as i mentioned the it when it's absorbed water it swells and this is uh, happening especially when uh, they are building some blocks here in uh, my buildings sometimes you see this cracks around the walls and why is that because actually there is uh, the water from the building goes into the clay underneath the building and then it start to swell so you see this tiny stuff can actually break a whole building so imagine about a reservoir it can breaks and make it even difficult to produce from it so that's why it's how to uh, mitigate that is by injecting uh, uh, a fluid with high salt so that's why you always need to talk to your production geologist production technologist petrophysics to tell them if you can if i see a high percentage of smectite guys be wary there is a smectite in the reservoir you need to use the right uh, fluid in order to uh, no, not get it sweat swell okay what else does the sedimentology use the uh, other open hole logs for his integration with uh, thin analysis in the reservoir section i mean the mineralogy part yes because you try as i mentioned you try to utilize whatever data that you have so there is other uh, like a uh, neutron density there is a resistivity there is a porosity logs there is the V shell logs, which is the calculated logs. You try to use borehole image as well, because borehole image actually it's like a not a total replacement of the core, but it will give you the image of the borehole. So you'll be able to see the sedimentary structure that can be used. But if you talk about the the rock data itself, you can link it with whatever logs that you have, and you try to make an understanding from it. And that's why you need to understand. Uh, the small scale going back to that that you need to understand what actually reflect to these logs so density yes again if you see high density for example you will try to understand why it's happening there is there like a, a salt in it is there uh, a cementation so that's why you will need to go to the smaller uh, aspect thank you guys thank you very much i really appreciate it. i am happy that you enjoyed it uh, what are the main tools used to delineate the sedimentology for each unit crossed while and after drilling? Okay, I need just to have a thought about this. What are the main tools? Okay, if I, I, if I understood you well, it's like how to build uh, a model of you understand what's uh, to limit the uncertainties. For me, personally, I will go for the rock data. The more, the more rocks that you have, you will be able to understand it and to calibrate it with logs. Because uh, from my experience, I'm, uh, you think that you understand a formation, but then when you try to use other in other fields, for example, let's say south of Oman, and then you drill it in the north of Oman, you see a different behavior. Because again, you, the diagenesis can play a role here. So that's why you need to always go back to the uh, rocks calibrated well with the logs and you see how it uh, behave seismic uh, it's my own uh, it's it's a different world that you need to utilize it and one of the thing actually myself i'm learning from it is the qi the quantitative interpretation from the geophysics we are trying to link now sedimentology with uh, the geophysics to understand how you utilize both this uh, two discipline together in, or, in order to delineate what's happening across the area. So, uh, and after the drilling, uh, again, as like a, this post studies, we'll try to understand what's happening. So you'll be able to predict where to drill before the drilling. Okay, it's, all, it's already one hour. So if there's no other question, I would like to thank you again. Uh, I really appreciate and thank you for the nice words. I might, if you have other questions, you can go through the slides again. And uh, I'm sorry if I was talking too fast. I, <laughs> I always get this feedback that I'm talking too fast. So I hope it was clear for you. However, if you want to contact me, you can use this uh, slides. Uh, uh, yes, thank you. So this is my email. If you have any question, uh, geological related, uh, Hussam0080 at outlook.com. 
Twitter, Instagram, and please, uh, I don't have the authority to uh, give you jobs, guys. So don't uh, send any CVs. It's all about the geology part. I'm only the geoscientist in video. I'm not the manager yet. So you can contact me in Twitter, and you can contact me also in Instagram. So by that, uh, let's say after tomorrow, we'll have this uh, learning geology virtually. It's away from the petroleum industry, but I will give you some example of it. So I hope you will enjoy it and you will be able to join as well in order to learn and teach from each other. Thank you very much for the question. I really appreciate uh, your attendance. Thank you, GSO. Thank you, uh, Earth Science Consultancy uh, Center. And see you very soon, inshallah. Thank you.